good evening, happy Wednesday evening. Uh, let's see, let's do some push-ups, shall we? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh. Okay. Hold that push up. Ooh. Okay. So for Majors, uh so outside when I was opening the door, there were all these mosquitoes, right? So I was doing like this, you know. I, I didn't do that. <laughs> but just you know, front. Right? Yeah, this is the just side piece and then let's sorry just you know Huh? That was fun. Mosquito, yeah, that's the only time I actually get to use martial arts. Huh? Let's take five minutes break, please. Thank you. Woo! Whew. All right. Oh. <sighs> 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 
Okay. So happy Wednesday evening and let's see. Let me grab some water and yeah. Some drinks too. Uh so yeah I hey uh this day I'm studying some interesting history like uh, the, we talked about Jamaica maroon, right? So, and so that's the. I don't like using this word because it's kind of like a. It's painful history in America, in Europe, Africa, uh, but there's no other way. So I, I use that word, okay, I, but I don't like using it, okay, but uh, <coughs> because indentured servitude, that's different from slavery, okay, so uh, I recently learned about it, um, yeah, that's quite new in my study of history, uh, yeah, slavery, okay, so uh, yeah, Bundy servitude, yeah, it's, it's, it's different. It's, it's like a transatlantic slave tra trade that happened 1500s to uh, like uh, 1800s for 300 years. It's uh, transatlantic slave trade. What happened there? Uh, Europeans, uh, they... Uh, purchased Africans and they brought Africans to North and South America. Okay, so uh, for 300 years, the slave trade. Okay, so it's very sad chapter. You know what, you know what's very shocking? We are talking about 1500s, 1600s, 1700s. They're supposed to be Renaissance. Age of the Reason, Enlightenment in Europe. So among philosophers, mathematicians, physicists, and it was right after religious, well, around like religious revolution, right? Christianity, you know, Protestantism, the Reformation, Martin Luther, and but at the same time, at the same period. Transatlantic slave trade happened. Isn't that shocking? Uh, one way to interpret that, that coincidence, historical co coincidence in Europe, is this: we're talking about 15, 16, 17, 1800s. Okay. Maybe. Some Europeans are nice. Maybe they were against slave, slave, slavery. Uh, but maybe they did achieve some kind of enlightenment, some realization, like some philosophical level, religious level. Maybe they achieved, they maybe discovered metaphysical truth as priests, as monks, as Musicians, as poets, novelists, writers, philosophers, mathematicians, physicists, scientists. More academic level, metaphysical dimension. Okay, maybe they discover some kind of truth, justice, what righteousness is. But maybe it took about 300, 400 years for those knowledge discovered by philosophers to be transferred to politicians. Uh, when did British Empire abolished slavery? Eighteen thirty-eight. Eighteen thirty-eight. Year eight thirty-eight. Okay. <coughs> British Empire abolished slavery. 
Before American Civil War, they abolished slavery. Okay, they made it illegal. Okay. Partially thanks to Jamaican uh, Maroons, the re rebellion by uh, escaped slaves, okay, in Jamaica, which was a British colony. Jamaica, uh, the Escaped slaves in Jamaica. Where is Jamaica? It's Caribbean Sea, like next to Cuba. Okay, this Jamaica Island. Okay, uh, between Brazil and America. Okay, so that's where Jamaica is. It's its own country. Okay, so now back in um seventeen forty, that's when <coughs> escaped. Former slaves, Jamaicans, far from Africa, okay, escaped slaves in Jamaica back in 1740. They achieved their independence. About 98 years before Great Britain declared abolition of slavery. Okay, that's how cool those people are. Okay, huge fan, Jamaican uh, Maroons. Very strong people, okay. Yeah, they're descendants of Africa, okay. They achieved, so they escaped slaves in Jamaica, okay, and they achieved independence 100 years before British Empire declared slave, abolished slavery officially, okay. They escaped in Jamaica, all this plantation of sugar. Cotton, tobacco, chocolate, like cocoa, whatever. They escaped and they formed their own society and they started fighting against former like slave owners and they freed the other slaves. And, and when British, more British Navy came to Jamaica, uh, they fanned them off, okay, using guerrilla tactic. Oh, they kind of like Viet Cong, okay? Vietnam War. America lost, right? To North Vietnam. Why? Because Viet Cong's Vietnam people, North Vietnamese, they used the superior knowledge of the jungles. They said like traps and stuff, like underground tunnels, okay? Uh, what did Jamaicans do to fend off British Empire soldiers? Uh, they used like disguise with the tree leaves, right, right, and those use superior jung jungle knowledge, geography, okay, yeah, guerrilla tactics, it worked. They fended off British Navy, British Army people, okay, so Jamaica Morons, okay. 1940, they reached a treaty, peace treaty with British Empire. So British Empire decided to just let them be, let them have free land. This Jamaica Maroons escaped slaves, former slaves, okay, African descent, okay. So. so my honorable mention, there is female, former Jamaican slave. Her name, Queen Nanny, Nanny, Queen Nanny. She's female. Military leader. She's kind of like Jeanne d'Arc a little bit, okay? Or France, right? She was military leader of the Jamaican Maroon, the first war of Jamaican Maroon, something like that, okay? Yeah. She's greatly admired in Jamaica, okay? <coughs> yeah. Then I was like, okay, I'm learning the history of slavery in Jamaica. How about history? Why, how about history of slavery in America? Right? Are there something like maroons in America, like 
some rebellion by African Americans when they were plantation workers. Uh, I really hesitate to use the word slave, okay? I, I don't want to use it because I, I want to res be respectful, okay? So yeah, we just call them, refer to them as um, African American uh, working plantations, okay? So, uh, did they rebel, revolt? Yeah, I, I looked them up and uh, yeah, they did, okay? But it's not very well studied, not as nearly as well as uh, Jamaican Muslims, okay? Uh, but American version of that story is, is this, it's like underground railroad. I have never heard that term before. <laughs> Why? I grew up in South South Korea, okay? I, I, I'm 43 years old now, okay? I, I'm learning American history. Probably that's been taught in maybe middle school in America, okay? I went to middle school in South South Korea, okay? So now at the age of 43, now I'm learning uh, the kind of American history that's been taught in like American middle school, high school maybe, okay? I just, just never have a chance to learn. Okay. Yeah. We take five minutes break, okay? And then uh, if you're American, born and raised, you probably already know, okay? But uh, uh, otherwise, I tell you what, the way I understand uh, Underground Railroad. Okay. Yeah. I quite recently learned about it. Okay. Very interesting history. Let's take five minutes break, please. Hey. Yeah, American history, very interesting. Actually, you know what? History anywhere in the world is very interesting. Like Korean history, Russian history, like Jamaican history, okay? They're all interesting, okay? Yeah. Uh, but because I'm running for U.S. Senate in America, Alaska, okay? Uh, it's my duty to learn history of Alaska and America as a politician wannabe candidate, okay? So, yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let's take five minutes, please. Okay.
Underground Railroad, uh, let's talk about that. So, uh, the way I understand it is this, okay, so, uh, before Civil War, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 1861 to 1865, right? So 1800s, before the Civil War. Uh, well, let's say, let's talk about 13 colonies, okay? You have Vermont, Massachusetts. I, I, I cannot enumerate all of them, okay? But, and you have Southern states and Northern states in Eastern coast basically, okay? Uh, Northern states, uh, they are more like uh, free states. Southern states, uh, slavery states, okay? So Southern states are pro-slavery. Northern states, uh, they are anti-slavery, okay? So, and so during the 1800s, uh, American southern states, slave states, where, where slavery was legal, okay? Uh, some of them escaped, and they moved to free states, northern states, or they went to Caribbean islands, or they went to Canada, where slavery was illegal, okay? Whatever, something like that. Okay, so, yeah, how do they make those movement from southern states to northern states to be free uh, through help of other people, both black people and white people. And the trade route, uh, that not trade, but escape route is called, known as underground railroads. So that's what it is, okay? <coughs> yeah. So, uh, it's like this, okay? It's not very black and white. Uh, well, no pun intended, okay? It's no, not black and white. Uh, in Africa, okay? Atlantic, transatlantic slave trade, okay? Uh, the people who sold... Africans to white people to Europeans, uh, mostly they were Africans. Okay, why? Because European white people, if they actually live in Africa, they didn't last very long because of malaria. They were, they don't have immune system for malaria. The Aboriginal diseases, okay, so Europeans, if they live in like Central or West Africa where they, they got their slaves from, they wouldn't last very long, okay, so the people who sold African people for slaves, they were Africans, okay, yeah, African elites, basically, okay. They sold kind of low class Africans. So, high class Africans sold low class Africans to the white people, Europeans. Okay, that's that lasts like 300 years 1500, 1600, and 1700, and 1800. Okay, so maybe 400 years. About okay, yeah. Now, it's documented historical facts, okay? Now, look at white people, okay? So, 1800s in America, okay? Some states were against slavery. They wanted to be abolish slavery, including President Abraham Lincoln. They were Republicans, okay? Back in the days, 1800s, Republicans were against slavery. I, 
even nowadays I'm sure they are, but uh, nowadays Democrats they are more like pro African Americans, right? Republicans they are more like pro white people, I guess, more or less, right? To simplify, okay. Of course, that's oversimplification, okay, but. At least that's how it seems, okay? I'm not saying what Republicans today are racist. I don't think they are, okay? But Democrats, they are more, more adv advocates for African Americans, okay? Yeah. Nowadays. 1800s, Democrats, they were pro slavery. Southern states, they were Democrats back in the days, okay? Back in 1800s, yeah, Republicans were anti-slavery. They were the abolitionists. Northern states, okay? That's how it was back then, okay? Yes, things change in history, okay? Sometimes it just reverses. Of our face, 180 degrees, okay? That's how history is, okay? Yeah. It's quite common, okay? Now, during the, the, the underground railroad, okay, to help escaped southern states, escaped slaves, to move them to free states, northern states, or to Canada, to Caribbean, to Jamaica, whatever, okay, people help them move out and travel to Canada or free states like Massachusetts, Vermont, okay or Jamaica, okay? And those people who helped out uh, escaped slaves, some of them were blacks and some of them were whites, okay? And those free states in America, like Massachusetts, Vermont, where they opposed slavery, um, they were white people, those politicians, including Abraham Lincoln. That's why they started civil war, okay? After civil war started, uh, those uh, white people, like generals, okay, they hired escaped Africans as soldiers and nurses, and also spies, okay? And the civil war was won by the Union Army. Okay, so. so that's the civil war. Okay. I apologize for my ignorance. Okay, I mean, if you are American, born and raised here, <laughs> probably you know a lot more than me about American history, right? I'm learning. Okay, why? Because I'm kind of like quasi-immigrant. Of course, I was born in America. That's how I got my citizenship. But I grew up in South South Korea as a teenager, as a child. So American history is relatively new to me. Okay, because I never had to learn it. Okay. Uh, now, I'm not going to school, but in my spare time, I'm learning it. Okay. Yeah. Why? It's interesting. Also, as a politician, I should know about it. As a politician in America, at least as a candidate, politician, wannabe, yeah, I should learn it, right? In my opinion, if you're a candidate, you're a politician, okay? You don't have to have some experience or getting elected to public office. No, as a candidate, you are doing politics, right? Yeah, you, you're a politician. So just let's say I'm a politician, okay? P please, come on. Let's say I'm a politician, okay? So. So, 300 years ago, 
like seven hundreds. Okay. Uh, Europeans would purchase African human beings and ship them to North and South Americas as slaves in this galley, this ship, very jam-packed, okay, as, as if they are cargoes, right? So treating human beings as if they are some objects, chattels, or animals, okay, that's unimaginable today, 300 years later, right? But back then, it was mainstream thing. Okay, now let's generalize. What is regarded as normal and mainstream today? Like LGBT or tattoo piercing, marijuana or sugar fetishism, whatever, What's or ultra interracialism, whatever, okay? That's regarded very mainstream, normal, okay thing today may be regarded as something extremely bad and wrong 300 years later that can happen again why well, his history repeats itself okay or this climate change alarmism or uh covid 19 alarmism whatever ideology mainstream dominant ideologies of today may be regarded as something heinous and unacceptable 300 years later from today like year 2300 AD okay. so they say historians they say yeah let the history be let the history be the judge okay yeah it can happen again I'm sure it will okay. because some of the dominant ideology Mainstream ideologies that I observe today, to me, they make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Okay. And I ma just mentioned a few. Okay. But that's just my opinion, though. Okay. I could be wrong. Hmm. But, I think humanity is making progress because in any era, there is mainstream bad ideologies in any given era in human history. There always has have been bad, unsound, mainstream dominant ideologies in my opinion nowadays yeah ultra interracialism sugar fetism tattoo piercism lgbtism and um marijuanaism some cosmetic plastic surgeryism what else to me those are the bad ones and also dominant ideologies, okay, in my opinion. I could be wrong, okay? But those ideologies are not nearly as bad as dominant mainstream ideologies back in the days, like 200 years ago, 300 years ago, okay? Like 300 years ago, dom bad, evil, bad dominant ideologies like slaveryism or witch huntism like Massachusetts Salem witch trial what year was that maybe 1600s 1700s maybe I know it was before Declaration of Independence. Why? Because Salem Witch Trial, it happened in a church court. Like, because before independence, church was a branch of 
government in America because America was still under British rule. Okay, so church was part of governmental agency. Government church was a church, the church court, the judicial system, and church, and there were governmental agencies. Okay, church court. I mean, Salem witch trial in Massachusetts. It happened in church court, Christian court. Okay. That's how bad it was, and it was mainstream. In America and in Europe too. Witch hunt ism, okay? It was mainstream. Dominant ideology, okay? It happened in church, it happened in judicial court, church, Christian court, okay? That's how bad it was back then, okay? So today's dominant bad ideology is, is not as nearly as bad as past dominant bad ideologies, like warism. People just kill people so easily. Okay? Yeah. I think humanity is getting way better. Okay, way better. To this generation, although not perfect, but perhaps it's the best generation humanity has ever seen in entire human history. Because if you look back in the human history, a lot worse of things happened. Okay. Humanity used to be a lot worse, a lot worse. Far worse. So I think humanity is making progress. Yeah. Let's take five minutes break, please. Oh. Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> now.
Okay. So, uh, let's talk some more about American history, okay? So, uh, I mean, I think, I don't know how much of American history that American public schools are teaching children these days. I, I don't know, okay? Because I don't have any children, okay? I don't know what they teach. About American history nowadays in America, in public schools or private schools, I have no clue. I have no clue. I got no children. Okay. How about Korea? What what do they teach in Korea? Korean schools? I have no clue. I I have no children. Okay. Nah. So, there's this Hollywood movie back in the days, Gone with the Wind, Gone with the Wind, uh, Clark Gable, Vivian Leigh, right? Gone with the Wind, what? Margaret Mitchell, female author, Caucasian lady, okay? Uh, made into Hollywood movie, right? Gone with the Wind. Uh, nowadays, that movie is being very criticized because they kind of beautify slavery a lot, okay? So, basically, they portray slave owners as very nice people and gentle people, and they portray uh, American, American, African-American plantation workers slaves as happy people okay so is there a fair portrayal of uh slave owners plantations and plantation workers african-american slaves is that fair portrayal okay and uh so that's the common criticism nowadays in america you're 2021 okay and yes last year too especially during the blm season I, i'm not downplaying blm okay but but let's think about this in a rational fashion okay let's exclude all the emotion all right let's just be a scholar academic and be rational about it okay all right again it's not black or white it's not black and white this world is not that clear cut, like good and evil, binary, zero and one. Uh, like it's not quite Boolean like that. Okay, yeah, Boolean algebra is digital technology. Okay, it, it's good, but uh, in electronics, mathematics, computer science, yeah, Boolean algebra is very important. Okay. Zero and one, digital technology, okay. But the real world is more analog, it's more spectrum, it's like shade, 50 shades of gray, or it's not that clear. Color. It's more fuzzy, like fuzzy logic, whatever. I mean, they didn't go very far in mathematics, okay, but they tried, okay, whatever. It's not that clear cut, okay, so. Look, many founding founding fathers of America, like James Madison, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, you name them, okay? All, many of them were slave owners, okay? So, 
Can you imagine? I'm not sure about George Washington because I'm I'm not a huge fan of Mr. George Washington, President George Washington. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of that man. Okay, I, I do not think he has a very good character. Okay, after studying his biography, he did some questionable things. Okay, the first president of the United States, Mr. George Washington. Okay, I'm not a huge fan of that man. Okay, I'm not. He's not one of my favorite presidents at all. Okay. I do question his character. He got good leadership skill. I get it. Okay, but his morality, ethics, and character, in my opinion, is highly questionable. Okay, he's more Machiavellian. Okay, amoral. All right, and I don't like. To, I do not respect that kind of politicians. Okay. But when it comes to Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, yeah, they are some of my favorite American presidents of all time. Okay. Yeah. Well, when it comes to Mr. James Madison, he was, from what I've, re what I've read, he was inspired by French Revolution. Okay. And to me, that says he's not a very smart man, Mr. James Madison. Okay. Because French Revolution, is a failure, total failure in my opinion, okay? And it was the two elites, competing elites, fooling the working class people for their advantage. It's elitists in fight, two elitist parties in France fighting, actually it was like more like a France and England, whatever, sometimes between France, two different factions, elitist parties, taking advantage of uned less educated working class people to their advantage by lying to them. Okay. In my opinion, that's what French Revolution was. Nothing good came out of it. It was a failure. Okay. Right after French Revolution, yeah. dictatorship. Napoleon Bonaparte. <laughs> okay, so French Revolution did not achieve a single good thing. It was an absolute failure. Okay. To me, French Revolution was overrated, and they killed so many people, you know, some people, in the name of freedom, okay? Some feminists in France died in guillotine in the name of freedom, okay? And before she, those French feminists passed away, they said that. It was recorded, and I read it, okay? Yeah. Oh, French people, you are killing people in the name of freedom. This French Revolution okay, is an utter, absolute failure, okay? Yeah. But James Madison was a huge fan of French Revolution, okay? Ah, not as smart as I thought he was. Mr. James Madison. Yeah, he was two-term president. He wrote the U.S. Constitution, right? So what? Not very smart man, okay? So, I guess Dubai is perfect. Anyway, but can you imagine Thomas Jefferson and James Madison being very cruel and unusual slave owner who whipped their African American plantation workers. I would have very hard time imagining that. Okay. So in my opinion, okay, I'll go out on a limb and say, uh, I don't think every single plantation owners back in 1700s, yeah, slave owners, I do not think every single American Caucasian white slave owners were cruel people. Maybe some of them were gentle and treated their slaves in a very humane and kind fashion. That would be my guess. Okay. Like good cops, bad cops, right? For example, when Japan colonized 
Korea. Early 1900s. For how many years? About four decades, 40 years, about. Yeah, Japan colonized Korean Peninsula and part of China and part of Philippines. A lot, many parts of Asia was colonized by Japanese Empire in early 1900s for about 40 years. This, where, when imperialism was the mainstream thing, right? We are talking about Nazi Germany, Italy, America, Russia, whatever. Even before that, okay? Yeah, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, England, France. They will participate in this international imperialism for like 500 years. Okay, yeah. One country colonizing other countries. They were the mainstream. Back in the days. Yeah. So when Japan colonized Korea, okay, there were good Japanese and bad Japanese amongst those colonizers. I know because I learned those Korean history. Okay. Yeah. Not all Japanese were bad even though they were colonizers, living in Korean Peninsula as colonizers. Some of them were good, some of them were bad. Yeah, there were some cruel ones, bad ones, okay. Who kind of enslaved Korean people. They were bad ones, okay. But some others were more educators. To teach Koreans some more advanced modern Western science as Japanese educators who came to Korea and educated Koreans. There are some of them too. Okay, yeah. I recently finished reading Atu Boy. Those are uh, We take five minutes break. I need some vocal rest. Okay, then I tell you that story. Okay, so it's not black and white. Is it? It's not black or white. It's black and white. It's kind of gray. There are blacks, whites in the middle. Wh whatever. What I'm saying is, you cannot say white people bad, black people good. No, there's some good blacks, bad blacks, good whites, bad whites, good cops, bad cops. Okay, you cannot just say. You cannot say. All the blacks are good and all the whites are bad. All the Japanese are bad and all the Koreans are good. It's not like that, okay? In Korea, there are good Koreans and bad Koreans. I know why. I lived in South Korea for two decades. I've seen good Koreans and bad Koreans. Okay. In Japan, there are good Japanese and bad Japanese. White people, there are good white people and bad white people. Black people, they are good black people and bad black people. Right? Yeah. That, that's the moral of the story. Okay? We'll take five minutes break, please. Okay? Then we'll continue to talk about this. Okay? Yeah. Okay, let's take five minutes break, please. Okay. Yeah.
Okay, so why don't we bring up the whiteboard, okay? All right. In a long time, right? Yeah. Let's do it. Wake up to human energy, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, anything goes, okay? Anything good. It's place of sharing knowledge, right? Yeah. Okay. Atu, okay? It's in Aleutian chain. Alaska. Western. Alaska, okay. So. Alaska, okay? It, it looks like this, okay? Okay, so let's say you have Canada, America, and Alaska. Okay? Here, here you have Seattle, Washington State, and here you have Vancouver, Canada, British Columbia, okay? And here is Alaska, okay? Aleutian chain is like this. Okay? Here is your Hawaii. Aleutian chain equals water, I think. All right? Here you have Russia. Okay? And, and you, have, you have Japan. And then you have Korea. North Korea and South Korea, okay? And you have Kamchatka Peninsula like this, okay? I, I'm sorry, I, I don't... Cannot draw very well. Whatever, Kamchatka Peninsula, okay? Connected to this, okay? Atu Island is like around here. It's close to, to Russia then. Alaska mainland, okay. From here, Atu Island to Alaska mainland is like 1,000 miles. From, it's not to the scale, okay, sorry. From Atu Island to Kamchatka Peninsula is like 500 miles. Okay, but this is many time Oceanic border, this is Russia, this part is Russia, okay, and this part is America, okay, so it's like that, okay. So. We're talking about Art Island history, okay. Whew. I turned the hero, it's kind of getting hot, so. You know, I think he, the education of history is so important, all right? So future generations of America or any other country, okay, I think they need to learn about their own country's history, okay. It could be some very, uh, not very flattering history, like in Japan, yeah, Japanese colonization of other Asian countries. I think Japanese students, future generations of Japanese should learn that without any disguise or pretension, just as it happened, okay, I think it's important. American people, Canadian people, I think they need to learn the history of their ancestors, goods and bad, both of them. Okay, I think it's very important for future generations' sake, sakes of their own, future generations' sakes, okay, for their country's betterment, okay, so that they don't repeat bad history. Good history, let them learn and keep doing the good stuff. Okay. Yeah. I think it's so important. Okay, so. So, Atu Island, ATTU, okay. This is Alushan chain, all right? Where am I? In Alaska? 
<sighs> I'm over here. Wasila, Mata Nuska, Sosistma, Matsu Valley, okay. Where's Anchorage? Over here. One hour and 30 minutes left. South, okay. Where's Pebble Mine? Around here, okay. Where I live, Wasila, Alaska, in Matsu Valley, Mata Nuska, Sosistma Valley, we call it Matsu Valley. From Matsu Valley to Pebble Mine, like Iliamna Lake, it's like 200 miles. It's like four hours drive, five hours drive, okay? If there's road, but there is no road now. But if I become US Senator from Alaska, we'll be able to. Yeah, imagine tourism opportunity, Alushan chain, sail ship, swimming, submarine, okay? Kind of tourism, using all the Alushan chain islands, okay? And maybe going to Hawaii. <laughs> It'd be great. Okay, where's Enwa? Arctic National Wildlife Life Refuge. It's all there up, up here. Okay. How about Alaska Oil Pipeline? Yeah, through the way is about, about here. Okay. Valdez is like around here. Okay, so oil pipeline goes like this. Okay. Through the way to Valdez, Alaska. Okay. NY is around here, okay, so, yeah. Arctic National Wildlife Refuge, okay, huge oil and gas there, okay, I, I'm about here, okay, Pebble Mine side, Iliamna Lake, that's around here, okay, so 200 miles, about five hours drive, okay, so, but there's no road, but if I become senator, yeah, I built it, I make sure it gets built, huge tourism, why? Oh. Katmai National Park, where there are a lot of Alaska grizzly bears, hunt salmon, okay? Yeah. It's right here, okay? Kodiak Islands, where the biggest brown bears on planet Earth live, Kodiak bears, Kodiak Islands is, is right here, okay? So you have Pebble Mine, also Iliamna Lake, the biggest lake in Alaska, and you have Katmai National Park, you have Kodiak Islands, and you have Alushan Chains. Huge tourism opportunity, okay? Yeah. So we, we should build a road. Because there's, there are road, there's road from Anchorage to Matanuska Valley, okay? Matsu Valley. Already, okay? But if I become US Senator from Alaska, yeah, I build a road from Matsu Valley to uh, Pebble Mine side, Iliamna Lake, okay, so that all our tourist destination, Iliamna Lake, Bristol Bay, the biggest place for fishing, salmons, okay, and you have Katmai National Park, Nova Irokta, Nova Irokta, <laughs> back in the days, volcanic place, okay, and then you have uh, the Kodiak Island right here, and you have all these Alushan Chen Islands, all the way to Atu. Great tourist, tourism opportunity, okay? Yeah. It will be done, okay? Maybe in my lifetime or long after I'm dead, it will happen, okay? Because we cannot ignore this kind of tourism opportunity. It will generate a lot of money. It will be international, okay? Okay, now. Let's take a break from Alaska story, okay? This is Canada, this is America, okay? Right here you have New York, right? You have Manhattan, right? The story of Manhattan, right? New York. So Canada, America, and you have Latin America, right? Here you have Suriname. Also very famous for Maroon. Maroon, Suriname is Maroons. 
okay, the escaped slaves having their own community, independent community, making some treaties, okay? Yeah, tsunamis. I might be mis mistaken, but from what I recall, there's some connection between Manhattan, New York, and Suriname. Okay. Let's take five minutes break, okay? I I'll double check. It was very interesting story, okay? Outside, there are too many mosquitoes. Let me check it inside this house. Outside, there's way too many mosquitoes, okay? So, uh, let me check it right here, okay? Yeah, it is true. So, Netherlands. Okay, what's the other country? I think it was Britain, England, Britain, and Netherlands. In 1600s. Okay. What year? Something 1667, 1600, okay? 1600, 17th century, okay? Uh, Netherlands people, the Dutch, they had Manhattan, okay? And British people, they had Suriname. And they exchanged it. So, Netherlands people sold Manhattan to England, Britain, okay? And Britain people, they sold Suriname to Netherlands people, Dutch, okay? So they exchanged it. 1600s AD. Yeah, that's what I remembered and I, I looked up. Suriname, Manhattan exchange uh, is confirmed, okay? So 1600s, okay? Back in the days, they had no idea 400 years ago, 1600s, Manhattan, New York would become as big as Big Apple, New York. Okay, so Netherlands people, they own this place. I mean, Dutch people, Netherlands, Dutch people, Harlish, they own Manhattan back in the days, 1600s. And British people own, owned Suriname. Okay? And they make exchange. Back in the days, 400 years ago, they had no idea Manhattan, New York, would become today's New York, like 400 years later. So that's why Dutch people made that exchange with Britain. But they did not have time machine. We still don't. I don't think we ever will. Okay. Okay. They have no idea. How about us today? Do we have any idea what's going to happen 400 years later? Do we have any idea? We don't. Okay. I live right here in Alaska. Okay. But I have some guest mention, okay? Educated guests. Will there be ever 
a road between Wasilla and Iliamna Lake, Pebble Mine site, I think there will be. I think it was just a matter of time. It may happen my, in my lifetime. It may have to happen after I'm long dead. But I think it will happen. Why? It, it's just common sense. Educated guess. Yeah, there will be highway between Wasilla, Alaska, Machu Valley to all the way to Iliamna Lake. It's just 200 miles long. Just 200 miles. Okay. Yeah. Because you have Katmai and Iliamna Lake, the biggest lake in Alaska. Just below that, you have Katmai National Park. All right. Below that, you have Kodiak Island. West of that, you have this dotted Alushan Chain Islands. Huge opportunity for sailing, swimming, shipping. Yeah, shipping. Yeah, yeah. International the trade route. Okay, because we have so many islands in Alushan Chains. Okay. And below that, you have Hawaii. Okay, so yeah. And across that, you have Russia, Japan, Korea, China. Okay. This is the gold mine right there, okay? Trade route. Because you can take a break between the shipping industry, right? Yeah, you can take a break from between these islands. Right? Also, yeah, there's tri trade route, shipping industry, ships, right? And tourism. Yeah, tourism, right? There's no way there will not be highway between Wasilla and Iliamna Lake and also this place, Pebble Mine site, gold, copper, molybdenum, 500 billion worth. Okay, it, it will happen. In my opinion, uh, perhaps probably uh, within the next two decades during my lifetime. Okay, there will be my guess. Okay. If not, my educated guess, it cannot not happen, okay? Because there's too much money here, <laughs> too much job opportunity, too much beauty to be appreciated, okay? I think it will happen. That will be my prediction, okay? That's what I think. Okay. Let's take five minutes break, please. Okay. So. All right. Mm. Let me take a picture of this. <sighs> Let me take a picture of myself. <laughs> oh. You know, my Asian eyes look too harsh without glasses, right? Yeah, so. Especially I'm drunk, when I'm drunk, okay, so. Let's take five minutes break, please, okay, so. Good stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, very good stuff. So if the, re the road is built, okay, Obviously, this Wasilla, Alaska housing price, real estate price will go up, right? Then will I sell this house to get some money? No. Why? 
I like this place, okay? And I want to travel to Iliamna Lake. Maybe for fishing, okay? Bristol Bay. All right? Iliamna Lake, Bristol Bay, Katmai National Park, and Kodiak Island, and Aleutian Chains, and Hawaii, Russia, Japan, Korea, China. Hello. I still want to leave this place. I think I will. As opposed to sell this house and make some money. No, I, I don't care about money. I want to have the experience of traveling to 200 miles west. Five hours drive, okay. Iliamna Lake, Bristol Bay. Katmai National Park, Kodiak Island. Aleutian Chain, okay. Cruise trip and Hawaii. I have never been to any of these places, okay. Think about that, right? Yeah, it's this thread route. Eh? Yeah, I think it will happen, okay? It's just common sense extension, right? Yeah. It's gonna be good, okay? Let's get five minutes break, please. Looks, gr looks great! Yeah, bright future. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say five minutes. Breakfast. Yeah.
Okay, so Atu Alon's story, Atu uh, Alaskan's story, okay, so uh, roughly speaking, yeah, that's where Atu Alon is, okay, very close to Japan and Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia, okay, so uh, Russia first, okay, yeah, Russians came to Alaska, what year was that? <sighs> The first contact between Alaskan natives and Russia. <sighs> Seventeen hundreds, I think. Okay, why? Alaska sold Al I mean or Russia sold Alaska to America uh back in um eighteen sixty seven, all right? That's when Russia sold America, I mean, Russia sold Alaska to America back in 1867. Okay, the Secretary of State Sword. Okay. His first name, I don't recall. Okay. Who's the president? I don't remember. All right. It was not a popular idea, okay? So, but Mr. Secretary of State, Seward, Mr. Seward, he was a visionary. Okay. Yeah. He was a visionary. He thought uh, purchase of Alaska from Russia is a good idea, okay? But it was not a very popular idea back then. 1867, okay? Many Americans, about half of them, thought Alaska is a useless land, just barren, absolutely useless land. They thought America purchasing Alaska from Russia was a waste of money. Okay, that's what they thought. Okay, but Secretary of State, I think, uh, Mr. Seward, he pushed for it, and he convinced. So yeah, America purchased Alaska from Russia. Okay. For well, how much money? I don't know. Some millions of dollars, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like Louisiana purchased Thomas Jefferson, James Madison. Very smart guys. They purchased this not just Louisiana, this big chunk of Midwestern states from Napoleon Bonaparte or France. Back in all your 1800s, okay? Yeah. Louisiana Purchase, okay? About like 50 years later, yeah, Mr. Seward and President of America back in the days. I, I don't remember what his name is. Okay. Yeah, they purchased Alaska from Russia, okay? So expansion of America, mainland, okay? Yeah, they, they did that, okay? <laughs> it was turned out to be very good decision, okay? But back in the days, not very popular idea. So, Mr. Seward and President of his day of America, okay, uh, they're like, uh, they were ahead of time. They're visionaries. Okay. Some American politicians back in the days, visionaries, pioneers, experimentalists. American politicians back in the days, not all of them, some of them, the kind of pe American politicians who leave their names in the library or a city, the city in Alaska named after sword, okay. Yeah, the, the kind of American politicians who end up leaving their names after they pass away, okay, they're the visionaries. The kind of politicians who do something different than their contemporary politicians who try something brand new. Okay? Yeah. That's the kind of politician I uh, want to be. The kind of politician who do something different. Huh? Year 2021, nowadays, okay, 
President Biden and his people, or President Trump and his people, oh, infrastructure, infrastructure, build the roads, bridges, dams. To me, that's because they are not creative. They are lacking creativity, originality, okay? Dams, bridges, roads, I think they are doing just fine. I mean, roads, yeah, we need to repave it because maintenance, okay? But yeah, bridges, yeah, just measure it, okay? Is it strong enough? Is it, is the other bridges will withstand the next earthquake? We need to measure it, okay? But all this year 2021, June, this or year before 2020, President Trump, President Biden, infrastructure, their plan, lacking imagina imagination, lacking creativity, originality, authenticity, they are lacking creativity, okay? Ugh. Mediocre politicians, right? President Biden, Obama, Trump, they're all the same. Lacking creation, creativity, imagination, mediocre politicians. They're not going to leave their names. Hundred years later, okay. Person notoriety, okay. I don't think they are very good, okay. President Biden, I, I don't think he's too bad. He's kind of like average, okay. Better than Obama or Trump, okay, in my opinion, okay. He's decent. President Biden, in my opinion, okay. Mediocre politician, the ephemerals. Yeah, they are in control now, but hundreds of years later, even ten years later, their names will be will be quickly forgotten, in my opinion, okay? Because they're just not different from other politicians. No originality, they don't have strength, boldness, okay? Just, just go along, okay? They are not strong enough to experiment with bold and brand new ideas, okay? I am that kind of politician. Not like them, but bold, brand new ideas, like zero penny campaign, okay? That's the kind of politician I am, okay? Experimentalist, huh? Yeah. So, Art to Ireland, okay? Yeah, year 1942, Japanese came, invade Hawaii, Atu Island, okay? World War II, 1942, okay? And uh, Japanese took about 50 Atu Aruzian chain Alaskan natives to Japan. I think it was Hokkaido Island, something like that, okay? About half of them passed away, I'm very sorry, okay? But half of them survived, and they came back to Alaska. Well, they first went to Philippines. Okay. Yeah, where U.S. Army people are. Okay. So from Japan, Hokkaido Island, Atu people, Arujan Chen, Unangan, Alaskan natives. Okay. So Japanese, they took them to Hokkaido Island and then Philippines, Manila, or something like that, okay. And then, uh, San Francisco, then Seattle, and then Alaska, like, uh, something like, uh, Atka Island, right here, something like that, okay. Close to mainland Alaska, okay. Atka Island, okay. Because Atu is just too far away, okay. So, yeah. But some, these Atuans, Atu Alaska natives, they they would tell us in this Atu boy. It's it's not just Mr. Nick Gorodov, there are some other people, his friends, okay. He would tell us stories about their experience in three years between two thousand between nineteen forty two to nineteen forty five, World War Two, okay, as a prisoner of war. Prisoners of war in Japan, okay? They would describe, yeah, some Japanese are nice, some Japanese are cruel, unusual, punishment kind, inhumane, abusive, violent, okay? But some are, there are some other Japanese 
the, the man were very nice and kind. As prisoner of war experience in Japan, Hokkaido Island, Atuan, Alaskan, Alushan chain, Americans, okay, as prisoners of wars, World War II, between two, 1942 and 1945, okay. Yeah, they would describe two kinds of Japanese, good Japanese and bad Japanese, okay. Okay, so don't you think it's fair to say? So that was like 1942, right? Okay, let's rewind the tape in this historical narrative, okay? 1742, in America, slaveholders, white people, and slaves or plantation workers, indentured servants, whatever, okay? So the Caucasian landholders, plantation owners, the slave owners, and you have African-Americans, the working class, as opposed to ruling class white people, okay? African-Americans, working class, okay? 1742, maybe in Virginia, all right? Let's say there are 100 plantation, plantation farming places, picking cotton or Sugar cane, tobacco, coffee, beans, or cocoa to make chocolates, whatever. Okay? To make sugar, coffee, tobacco, cigarettes, or chocolates, or cotton, whatever, okay? Let's say the 100 plantation farming establishments in Virginia. Okay? How much percentage of those slave owners were cruel and unusual punishment kind of type, abusive, violent, all these whips, cracking whip, right? Crackers. And how much percentage out of 100? My guess, plus 30%. Is spectrum okay? Yeah, thirty percent good, thirty percent kind of in the middle, thirty percent really bad. Okay, that's a normal distribution in statistics. I'm a sci I have science background. I'm a scientist. I dropped out of PhD. Okay, so uh, maybe I'm not a very good scientist. Okay, but just as a common sense person, okay, out of one hundred slave owners back in 1742 in America. Maybe 30% good, 30% kind of in the middle, 30% very bad. Sliding scale, spectrum, it's not binary. Oh, white people, they're all bad, black people, all good. I don't think so, okay? So yeah, this depiction of slavery era in this Margaret Mitchell's novel, Gone with the Wind, later became a Hollywood movie, okay? Maybe it de described about 30% of slave owners and slaves in America in 1800s. Just 30%. Okay? The, another 30%, maybe it was worse. The other 30%, maybe it was really bad. Like Mr. Gordon with all that scars on his back, okay. Later on, he was hired by, he escaped the slavery, okay. He was hired by Union Army. He became something, a sergeant. Somewhat leadership position in Civil War. And he got captured by Southern Confederate people. <laughs> and he got whipped again, tortured. But he is kept again. He's a Mr. Gordon, very strong African American gentleman. So he got got back to Union Army. Okay, yeah. I read his biography. Okay, his picture is this bareback, very harsh slavery, all these scars. Okay, it became international sensation. Okay, not just in America, in Europe too.
Okay, so that gentleman, Mr. Gordon, he contributed to this winning of Union Army against Confederate Army. Okay, abolition of slavery in America. Okay, he's like real hero. Okay, yeah. very strong gentleman. Okay. So, Southerners, Southern American, Caucasians, yeah, they made big mistakes, okay, slavery, but not all Southern slave owners were too cruel. Some of them were nice, in my opinion. I'm making educated guess here, okay? Good cops, bad cops, good Japanese, bad Japanese. Mm -hmm. Good Russians, bad Russians, okay? Good Americans, bad Americans. Good whites, bad whites. Good blacks, bad blacks. They all mixed, okay? You cannot just say, Oh, white people, they are all bad. Black people, they are all good. No. As a Korean American, okay? I know Japanese, some of them are good, some of them are bad, okay? Actually, we can go recursive on this. We give, give it five minutes, okay? I need some book rest, okay? Do you think a person can be 100% bad, another person 100% good, 100% of the time? I don't think so. We take five minutes break, right? We'll be more mathematical, okay? Yeah. Recursive structure. Huh? Like picture in a picture, tree in a tree, branching pattern. Yeah, the chaos theory, the fractal geometry, whatever. We do some of that stuff, okay? After farmers break, please. Thank you. Yeah, I can't kind of get drunk. But we get the job done, right? Do you think I can do this without drinking? Vodka and whiskey. No. I need vodka and whiskey to do this stuff. Okay. Because I'm more relaxed when I'm drunk. Okay. So. But we continue. Okay. Let's say five minutes break, please.
Okay, so yeah, I think we are done with this whiteboard. Okay, yeah, we don't really need the same all for this episode. Alright, so let's talk about something esoteric. Esoteric, it's kind of secretive, like hidden treasure, metaphysically speaking. Okay, yeah, something more exotic, right? Whatever. So, I mean, I'm the kind of guy who wants to be famous, right? That's one of the reasons why I'm doing politics, okay? Yeah. Maybe some other people, they want to be famous because uh, they want to make a lot of money, okay? But to me, I'm a Christian, okay? Jesus, I believe in human salvation, okay? At least walk towards that goal. Just one inch, a slight better amount of humanity, okay? Just one generation, right? Yeah, as an educator, teacher, scholar, philosopher, or politician, right? We just want to make this world just a little bit better. Maybe not wholesale salvation all of a sudden. Maybe it's not that, okay? Just gradual better amount of human quality, humanity, little by little, okay? That's how it has been, okay? Mr. Jesus Christ, I think he made some mistakes, okay? He called those establishment people. Yeah, oh, you are like children of snakes. Children of snakes, okay? He said that, okay? I think it was a mistake, okay? So establishment people like Jewish synagogues or Roman government, they took notice of that and they crucified him, okay? Because they took him as a, some rebellion leader, right? Maybe Jesus was too radical. Maybe he was too... Maybe Mr. Jesus Christ, 2,000 years ago, maybe he did not know, he did not know how to, in, how to work with the establish, establishment people. Maybe that was his mistake. Maybe they was, that's why he could not save the world 2,000 years ago. Okay. But perhaps even if he did not, even if we assume that he did not save the world 2,000 years ago when he was here in, on planet Earth, Israel, North Africa, okay. Maybe he made one step better, one step higher, okay. Christianity, Judeo-Christianity, maybe. Okay. But so I'm a historian by now, student of history at least. Okay. And most amateur historian. Okay. Humanity has been progressing toward the betterment inch by inch every year. Slowly, gradual, betterment, evolution. Very slowly. Okay. Yeah, I think this G Mr. Jesus Christ, I don't think he actually saved the world 2,000 years ago. It's just gradual in increment, increment of this human betterment, inch by inch, every year, okay, just a little bit, okay. But humanity has been progressing, ever evolving toward betterment inch by inch every year, okay? So that's what I get from studying all the history in the world, okay? So I want to do the same thing, okay? Yeah, just slowly, okay? I want to do my part, yeah? yeah. As an adult, our past generations, our parents, grandparents, they did their part to make this world a better place. Just slowly, inch by inch, okay? Inch by inch. Yeah, yeah, I do the same thing. As an adult, yeah, let's make our future generation to be better than us, our current generation, okay? Just a little bit more, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you have to work with the establishment. What people who are in charge now, you have to work with them and even learn from them. 
with their seniors. Okay? You have to pay some respect for the people who are in, in power, like President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris. You have to pay them respect and work with them, as opposed to antagonize them, antagonizing them or vilifying them. Okay, incumbents, give them due respect. They must have been doing something good. That's why they got elected in American democracy. They must have done have done something good. They got elected in American democracy. Okay, yeah, they voted for President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris. Okay, yeah, I do respect them. Okay, yeah. So let's pay them respect. Congratulate them for being elected as President of the United States, Vice President of the United States, okay? And appreciate them and work with them, all right? So there's a key difference between me and Mrs. Commissioner, okay? Mrs. Commissioner, she's too new in politics, okay? Where well, I'm kind of new in politics too, but I've been in politics for like three years. She, the first time running for U.S. Senate, First time running for anything, okay. I she's too newbie, okay. Mrs. Commissioner, okay, so maybe she'll learn a lesson, okay. I don't know. Hopefully she does if she's gonna get elected, okay. Me, my campaign, yeah, it may happen, but maybe not next year. It can happen next year, okay. Ah, I don't know, okay, but I'm an experimentalist, okay, so uh Zero penny campaign, okay, so it's a long shot, but I'm okay with that. Why? Because I'm a scholar, academician, academic, secular part, okay, outside of school. Uh, but I learned enough from schools, okay, yeah, street smart, school smart, book smart, okay, I got it all, in my opinion. Yeah. So yeah, I do what I can, okay, to make a difference in the world, okay, because I go down the same track as other politicians. What's the point? If I become like any other average politicians, I don't make any difference, okay? What a waste of time, right? So when I'm running for election, okay, I want to do it differently. Zero penny campaign, no campaign donation, just a little bit of my money. Okay, yeah. Zero penny campaign because I believe democracy should not run by money. There's another name for that, plutocracy. Okay. Yeah, I don't want that. Okay, so I'm idealist, experimentalist. So I'm trying something new. Okay. Next year, I don't have. It's not necessary that I get elected. Why? I will continue to run, keep on running again and again and again. Okay. For the next 30, 40 years. Until I become 70 years old. Next 30 years, okay. Last year I lost the election. Okay. Alaska State Senate Republican primary. I lost the election big time. Okay. No problem. Why? Because next year I will run again. Maybe I get more votes. Two years later, so next year, 2022, right? Two years later, 2024, I will run again. Next, next year, 2026, I will run again. 2028, 2030, 20, 20, yeah, keep on running until I become like 70 years old. After that, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, next 30 years, I keep on running. What level? Well, I mean, probably 20 years later from today. So today is like 2021, right? 20 years later, it will be like 2041, right? 
Maybe I make enough money, maybe I get enough savings, maybe I run for something more local, city level, county level, state level. But by then, I might have enough money because city level, county level, state level politicians, they don't the salary level is less than what I make now. Every American salary, okay? So, local politicians, either they have big brothers or big uncles, rich uncles, okay? Or they have some inheritance money from their parents, grandparents. Or they maybe just inherited these local business people. Or maybe they are retirees. They're typical local politicians. They have enough money. Okay, why? Because local politicians' salary that's less than average American salary. Okay, because to comparative, comparative. Yeah, transaction demand theory, economist paper. I explained that. Okay. Yeah. Too much competition, price go down. Okay, it's like buyer's market, right? Too much sellers. Selling politics, okay. Yeah, so. And I don't have rich uncle, rich parents. I have to make my own money. Okay. Now, I make about uh, average American salary. I pay my bills and that's it. Okay. But 20 years from now, when I'm in my 60s, 30 years from now, when I'm 70s, Maybe yeah, maybe I can run some local election, okay? But would I do that? I might. But today I'm running for U.S. Senate. Why? Because local elected positions, I cannot live with that kind of low salary, All right? Because I don't have internet terms money. I don't have. I'm not old enough to get retired, okay, so I have to pay my bills. So local elections, like city level, county level, state level, not now. Why? I don't make the kind of money and I don't have savings account like that or I don't have any inheritance money, okay. So I'm longing for something big, like U.S. Senate, okay. Some other time, maybe Congress or governor uh, from Alaskan governor, Congress, Senator. For a while, that's what I'm going to run for. Yeah, also U.S. President too. Okay. Because their salary level is higher than what I'm making now. Average American salary. But after that, maybe when I'm 60s, 70s, maybe I save some money. Maybe I, I won some lottery. Maybe I don't, I don't do lottery, okay? I'm just kidding. Just to rhyme, okay? Whatever, okay? Yeah. I may run for some local elections, like city, county, state level. I can happen, okay, uh, but I might, whatever. Let's say five minutes break, okay. Uh, then we'll talk about something else, okay? Too much politics, I. <laughs> Let's say five minutes break, please. Good. <laughs> right? Okay. Thank you for being my good friends, okay? Yeah. I have some other friends that I communicate with in some other outlets, social media, but especially thank you. Thank you. For being my friends. Thank you. God bless you for generations to come. Thank you. Let's take five minutes break, please. Thank you. Especially thank you. Woo, thank you.
Okay. So, yeah, I remember what I forgot to say. Okay, yeah, the binary fusion, binary division, people's good and bad. Yeah, good people, bad people. But the thing is, it's more complex than that. It's kind of recursive structure, like tree branching pattern, a chaos theory, this uh, fractal geometry, okay? Let's say we divide humanity between good people and bad people, okay? But, okay, good people, they're not always good, all right? Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad, okay? Good people, there are some bads in there. Nobody's saint. Nobody's angel. People are people. Okay? Even Jesus, Buddha, saints, Socrates, Plato, Confucius, Lao Tzu, or Aristotle, Immanuel Kant, Arthur Chopin, or you can dig up some dirt on them. Okay? I, did many, I did it many times with Mr. Jesus. Okay? There's some darts on them, okay? All those saints, like Confucius, Buddha, Muhammad Allah, okay? They got some darts in their hands, okay? Look. People are people, okay? Jesus, Buddha, Muhammad Allah, Gautama Siddhartha, Buddha, or Confucius, they went to the bathroom, alright? Some of them even went to bedroom and had some ladies in their bedroom and whatever, with some reproductive activity, whatever, adult entertainment, whatever. All right, yeah, people are people, okay. I don't think they're hundred percent clean, squeaky clean. Mister Jesus, Mister Buddha. Uh, yeah. Maybe they got some fungus on their toenails or I mean they go to bathroom, they engage in bathroom activities, defecation, urination, okay. Mr. Jesus, Mr. Buddha, okay, come on. They're people, okay. They are men too. Yeah, Mr. Confucius, Mr. Lao Tzu, Mr. Muhammad Allah, okay. Maybe some of them, yeah, Mr. Socrates, Mr. Plato, Mr. Aristotle, maybe they uh, hung out with some ladies and had some date, maybe got into some bedroom affair or whatever, okay, so people are people, okay. I don't think that's script clean. I don't think so. <laughs> I doubt it. I don't think they are that clean and that saintly, all right? I doubt it. Okay. They are not gods, they are human beings. They are men, right? How about female saints? Uh, like John Dark or Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth or, uh, Who's the Indian lady? Lady in India, the Catholic nun. What's her name? Mother Teresa. Okay. I don't think they are 100% squeaky clean, okay? <laughs> I don't think so. Maybe they commit some mistakes, errors, sins, okay? According to their religions, alright? People are people. Like Friedrich Nietzsche said, yeah, human all to human. We only humans. Homo sapiens, okay. It's human condition, okay. Human limitation, right? Yeah. Human nature, okay. Yeah. How about bad people? Maybe there are some good in them, okay? Bad people? Maybe they are hundred percent evil. Maybe they are Satan. Devil 666. Maybe there's some good in them, okay? Yeah, so recursive structure. We have good and bad people. In good people, there are some good and bad. In bad people, there are some good and bad. Yeah? There's a recursive binary division applying mathematics, 
Boolean algebra, okay, to human analogy, okay, yeah, so, so that's that. <sighs> what else did I plan to talk about? Just one more thing I want to talk about before this episode ends. Let me try to remember of that one thing. <laughs> I'm trying to remember, right, but it's not quite coming to my mind. <sighs> Maybe come back to me, okay, if it's significant enough. I had a quite busy day at work, right, so some idea came to my mind, so but I didn't quite have time to type it down in my cell phone calendar. <laughs> but if it's significant enough, yeah, you recall the surface again, okay? If it's important enough. All right, so. <sighs> yeah. 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 But hey, this episode was very productive and fruitful, right? Yeah, we talked about a lot of good stuff, right? So, America, yeah, I'm in America, so I can really speak for America, okay? Yeah, they should learn from this American history. Underground Railroad, Blacks and Whites come together to free African American plantation laborers, okay, to give them freedom, okay. Both Blacks and Whites help them to free them, okay. How about Southerners, slave owners? Well, they are not always that bad, okay. There are some bad slave owners, even them. Maybe they were not always cruel, all right. And but there are some good slave owners back in seventeen hundreds. Okay, so slave owners they were not hundred percent evil. Okay, there's some real bad ones in the middle one and some good ones. Okay, yeah. So it's not black and white. Okay, slave owners it's not like they're hundred percent bad. 100% of the time, all right? That's the rational, logical, mathematical interpretation of this slavery in America, in my opinion, okay? Uh, I don't think slave owners in 1700s, they were 100% of bad people, 100% of the time, okay? Some white people, slave owners, I think some of them, some time at least, treated this African-American plantation laborers with, you know, nice fashion. Okay? Yeah. So nowadays, okay, BLM, whatever, okay, they characterize white people as a bad people and black people as a good people. Maybe they are, okay. yeah, but, yeah, but I don't think that's very rational, logical, scientific, rational, reasonable thinking, okay? Yeah, they're good blacks and bad blacks, but bad blacks, they're not always bad. Good blacks, they're not always good. There's some good whites, bad whites, good whites, they're not always good. 
bad vibes. They're always bad. Okay, it, it's like it's not black and white. It's not zero and one. It's not good and evil. Okay, they are mixed. Okay, let's not oversimplify the reality of things and of people. Me. Sometimes I'm nice, sometimes I'm bad. Sometimes I look pretty, sometimes I look ugly. It depends on the days. Right? So it's not like I'm 100% bad, 100% ugly all the time in my life. I have some good days when I'm nice, when I look pretty. When I look handsome, I have my share of this handsome days, kind, me being kind and nice and generous. I have my share of those days, okay? I want to expand that. I want to look good more times in my life. I want to be nice more times in my life. But sometimes I'm ugly, sometimes I'm bad rude it happens why because i'm only human okay we are talking about ethics morality philosophy when i'm fully drunk but that ha i can do that because I learned how to drink properly from my father, my grandfathers. I have two grandfathers, father side, mother side. Okay. I have many uncles, father side, mother side. Okay. They told me how to drink properly. Okay. Yeah, just Asiatic, Asian, kind of Korean drinking culture, drinking education. Okay. First time I drank alcohol, I think I was like seven years old. Yeah, from my father, with my father, okay? Yeah. My uncles, my grandparents, they told me how to drink properly. Don't drink too much, don't drink too much, don't drink too fast. But after you are drunk, behave. Don't cause any troubles, okay? This Korean drinking culture, Asian, Far East Asia, okay? China, Korea, Japan, okay? Yeah, I learned how to drink properly, okay? From my father, grandfathers, uncles, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, drinking education, how to drink properly, okay? That's all I have to say, all right? So happy Wednesday, all right? And uh, God bless you. And thank you for being my friends and being my parent of years. Thank you for, thank you for taking care of me. God bless you for generations to come. Amen. In Jesus' name or whoever sends name, okay? <laughs> that you subscribe to. Yeah, Confucius, Muhammad Allah and Buddha. They were great, okay? Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Thank you for forgiving me and loving me. Thank you. Bye.